Okay, so this is going to be convert 2.py. Let's call this convert 3.py. A program that converts Celsius temps to Fahrenheit. So we're on number three. Number three, page 53, uh, modify the convert.py program. We're going to call it convert 2.py, or excuse me, convert 3.py. With a loop so that it executes five times before quitting i.e. converts five temperatures in a row. So, uh, um, and, um, and it does so five times in a loop. So we're gonna do this five times. So let's see now if, as is want to happen at times, you know, you might forget, you might forget like what what you learned, you learned. Um, so you want to look. So let's check out. We're going to use a. Now we only have. Remember, we only have the for loop. I don't think we've learned while loops yet in this book. So you normally want to keep that in mind as well, especially for you guys that are taking all kinds of classes uh you know and you might have learned all these different types of loops in um or all these different diff, you know different different methods in a different class maybe using a different language or maybe on your own i think by and large as far as scholastic work um i don't think they want you to use a lot of that advanced stuff they want you to come and only use the material that you've learned uh, you know, in that book and in that, in those, those lectures. So even if, you know, a while loop would, would be better here for whatever reason, um, if we didn't learn while loops yet in this book and it's an intro to computer science book, um, which it is, then we probably shouldn't use a while loop. So let's use a for loop. So let's call it a for loop. So this is going to be, so we're not going to, so what we're going to do is we want to think about what's going to be inside the loop. So it's going to convert five temperatures in a row. So let's make it fun. Let's make it fun. Let's see, um, print. This program, because I was thinking about saying, oh, this, you know, you're on loop one, you're on loop one of five. Um, so let's see if we can't do that. So we could say four, because that would be kind of fun, right? A little bit challenging. We're pushing ourselves a bit. But let's see if we can't pull that off. If we can, it's all right. We'll do it maybe in the next chapter or, you know, um, the next section, etc. So, or whenever we feel really confident about it. Or whenever we, we have time to maybe to look it up, to look around on Stack Overflow or on Google or, um, you know, in di different forms. Um, okay, so we could say for n in, so for n in, so it's not really going to be a list. We could say for n in, yeah, yeah, let's make it a list because... Why are we making a list? Well, because of what I said earlier that we're trying to make it kind of funny. We're kind of trying to amp it up a little bit. We're gonna so for n in this 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 list, this group of numbers, um, it's going to um, each value we're gonna use as we're gonna put that in our output. So for n in one, two, three, four, five, because it's gonna start at one. We're gonna say. So we're gonna say this program converts Celsius temps to Fahrenheit. So for n in one, two, three, four, five, now we're gonna print. So now we're gonna say, so we can put it after or before. So let's let's put that question before. Um, this is gonna be, yeah. So we're gonna say this temp conversion 
is number and then n let's see if this works and I, guys remember i'm not perfect i might make a mistake and have to fix it up but okay so this type of conversion is number n and so we might have to so let's think what we might have to do well are these integers probably so let's make it maybe str n would be a string version so uh so we'll change the data type to string so string n to con concatenate these um separated by plus sign so this type of version is number one and then of five enjoy okay so let's see if that works okay and then we're going to say what is this Celsius temperature so then th this is our this is our for loop and we're also letting the user know what number we're on and then what what number we're we're going to complete um, so it's going to be one of five, two of five. So the user knows like, oh, we're, we're going to have five. So they like know when it's going to end. It's not like they're like stuck in, in limbo. So I think that that, that, that would be a plus um, on the educator side. The edu I think the educator might appreciate that. I think the user, we're I mean, just thinking about in, in industry, in the, the business world, I think the user might appreciate that. Uh, they know when it's going to end. So, all right, so let's make that. So then that's going to be, we're going to end that. Um, so our for loop doesn't look like we need to end it because it doesn't look like, because this word end, I think would be in purple if, hmm, let's try it. Let's definitely try it. Um, and I did learn a little bit about like Ruby and stuff, so I might be a little bit confused. Um, and a couple of other languages, just, you know, a little bit. So let's just try stuff. I think it's going to be our ends that we're going to have the issue with. Um, let's, I guess we can, let's try to leave it and see what happens. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have some issues with some ends. Um, let's just call this convert to .py since we left it there. Okay. All right. So you want to think about what could go wrong. And that way, if something does go wrong, we know exactly where we're going. Okay. So let's go to Python. Five. Let's open this up. Let's see how she. Let's see how she works. Okay. So then we're gonna go. Open. All right. There it is. So let's double check. User comments. Uh, we're probably gonna need an end here. We might need an end here. So we might need two end statements. We'll see. We'll see, because you know how we had it before. Just without the for loop, we didn't need any ends at all. It was just the definition, the function definition, and then we we called the function here. So you know, just learning learning the new syntax, learning the new language, and that's why I think going through these problems patiently and carefully is is really helpful to sort of construct how the how the logic and the syntax and um, the calculations work, you know, based on that that programming language, etc. So let's let's run. Oh, we didn't save it. Let's go here. No. Oh, okay. I didn't save it. I didn't realize we didn't save it. Okay, here we go. Oh, nice. There it is. All right, so let's try it again. 100. Nice. Let's just do 100 then. Hold on. Excellent. So it came out 212 every time except for 200. It was 382. Um, and the spacing was good except for that of. Um, you might want to skip a line after explaining what it is. You might want to explain it specifically. Uh, a total of five times. Five different times. So we'll just make it a little bit clearer. And then here, we can either put a comma, or I think for readability, we can put a plus, since we had a plus here. 
and then we can can do that. I'm not sure if it will work without putting SDR, but let's try it. I'm pretty sure it won't though. But I like to try it just in case, just to see like, is it possible? <laughs> you know, um, and um, if I'm 100% sure, then I won't try it. But if I'm pretty sure, um, but I've got a little bit of time, then I'll, I'll see what's up. All right, so let's see. There it is, exactly. Can, so this is truly an int. It's not as powerful as eval. Eval is awesome. <laughs> this little, these four characters, they just dropped it in. Oh, that's the Fahrenheit. You know, Fahrenheit was, it wasn't even Celsius. It jumped another, you know, so it was like Celsius was eval. Okay, cool. That pulls off um, a float or an int. And then it takes that float or int, dumps it out here to Fahrenheit, float or int. But since it, I think since it came from that eval, you know, the initial source, the assignment here, you could just drop it in. I mean, it's it's so amazing. Um, that, you know, Python 3, you don't, you don't have to make that a string. It's just pretty, pretty sweet. Uh, so, but we got to do, yeah, we got to make this str. We got to make sure the data types are the same. That's something that comes up a lot in computer science. You want to make sure um, so, and you want to keep track, like if you're C++, you know, um, static casts and, you know, yeah, you just, you just got different, um, uh, you know, different routes with different programs. Okay. So let's, let's, let's try this. Let's, let's try to run it again. Actually, since we changed it, let's try to open it again. Let's go here, convert to pi. Comments are good. Let's see. Yep, five times in a for loop. Let's run it. All right. One of five. Negative 190.3. And then obviously we would check, you know, so if you, you know, jump onto Google. You know, you can look at a Celsius Fahrenheit, um, you know, converter. There's, there are dozens of them free online. Um, and then, yeah, and that's it. And then that, and then it, it, it kicks you out. It did it five times. What are some other ways, some other ways we, we can fix the readability? We can change enjoy to at the end of five different times in the top here. And then take it out here because that doesn't really fit. You're saying enjoy each time. It's like, eh, it's a little much. And then we can space it out so we can have some some spaces. So let's let's uh, let's see how this works. Okay, so let's delete this. It doesn't really fit. Right? And then let's um, print. Let's just see how this this works. So then we're gonna go here. This enjoy. That should, should work pretty well. And then maybe, uh, maybe here, just for readability. But I love how minimalist Python is. You don't need all these end statements, like, for, you know. Um, and yeah, so let's, let's see. It's kind of cool. You know, every, every language has like these amazing. These amazing parts of their syntax where you're like, man, you could do this in Ruby, you could do that in Python. So, or maybe I just haven't left the house in six years and I'm just, everything amazes me. All right, here we go. So open. All right. All right, so let's run this. Yeah, this works better. This temp conversion is number one and number five. And it's a little much as far as the skipping the space. I think, I think it works. I think it works. I'm going to lose one of them. Let's lose one of them. Let's lose this one. And if we want, we can actually make it a, 
Although, I don't know, I think Professor Zell might be a little irked if you just threw all these, like, just comment it out. I mean, it's good to comment out, and then when you go back and you clean it up. So we can just comment it out right now and then, and then see about cleaning it up. So let's, let's open it again. And there's probably a much faster way of, of doing this. Than when I, but I'm just very straightforward. You know, as I learn something, I'll, I'll incorporate it in the videos. And if I don't know it, you know, I'm not going to pretend to know it, you know, um, because I want, I want to sort of go over this as if I was a student, you know. And so when I stumble around, you know, I, I want to help with, you know, I think solving problems. It's learning how to deal with stress, learning how to deal with adversity, learning how to deal with being confused or lost and just sort of trying to get back on the main road. Like tr trying to figure out what do I know as opposed to like I don't know and just dismissing it and saying, ah, oh, it's too much. You're, you want to think what do I know? And then work work from there. So that's why I, I I try to keep that in mind with these these videos. So yeah, one of five. Yeah, I think this works because then you know for certain that those three lines fit for um you know for for each. It just fits like each each one. I think I think this works. I think that Professor Zell would be happy. Any instructor would be be pleased. Like this is, isn't bad. Obviously, we would, would double check. We we jump onto a search engine and, and, and make sure that we we got all these correct, um, and then also making sure that the answer is supposed to be in the correct data type. Like here, this is really long, um, and but based on the Zell book, I don't think that we're expected to know um, how to truncate this and to round this down to the nearest hundredth or whatnot. So I think that this would be sufficient for this question. Uh, thank you very much.